Hey everyone, this is Kit Pang, the founder of Boston Speaks, and I want to say welcome to our panel today. This is a very important topic that I think is on everyone's mind. So let's really talk about how to speak so others listen, and also how to listen so others speak. We're talking about anti-racism today, and we have a great panel, so I'm super, super excited. Some of the things that we will be talking about are, for example, systematic racism, microaggression in the workplace, advice on getting how to get people to listen. Uh, of course, I'm not going to speak too much about that because I want our panelists to speak on that. But uh, there's a great mentor that told me, uh, if you want to just learn anything about humankind, just look up around 40 quotes about this topic and you'll have a good sense of what people are talking about. So I want to just share some quotes with you right now, just super quickly as I uh, share my screen now. And I hope I'm not going to share 40 quotes with you today, just only three. And if you are watching live right now, if you have any quotes that you would love to share, you can even go on Google now and look them up. And for the people that's watching the replay, you can still share them. Uh, one thing I do wanna say, if you are watching this live, I hope that you can help us amplify all our voices by sharing this live video as well. But let me just go quickly to the quotes that I want to share. Um, it's from Rosa Parks. To bring about change, you must not be afraid to take the first step. We will fail when we fail to try. What are your thoughts about that, right? And here's another one. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing that can be changed until it is faced. James Baldwin. And from Martin Luther King, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So I want to ask some of you right now, maybe uh, in, in the comments, you're watching live, you're watching the replay, what are some things that you want to share with us? What's going on in your world? Uh, what's, what's, what, what's on top of mind for you? I would, we would love to hear. I just want to read some comments that's out there as I'm flipping back and forth. And as I know that for the people that's watching live right now, it is, a, it is an early morning for this conversation uh, as we warm up into this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad we are having this conversation uh, to get us started for the day. And so what we're going to be doing today as the comments are rolling in, I'll be introducing each panelist one by one. We're going to have a maybe a quick uh, five minute chat with each individual, and then we're going to go into this uh, panel style. Okay, so without further ado, I would love to get started, and, and it, it's going to be in this order. I'm going to introduce Cleone first, Camila, and then Catherine Storing. So let me first introduce Cleone. Cleone Manvel, who is a time management consultant, mastermind facilitator, workshop presenter, and diversity and inclusion advocate. So Cleone's passion to help people improve their quality of life has manifested in her 25 plus years of working with programs to address health, education, employment, and housing needs. As an immigrant from Jamaica, she came to Queens in in 1986, she earned her master's and was selected as presidential management fellows with the federal government to work with communities and local governments for 17 years to end and prevent homelessness. She resigned in 2018 to become a full-time entrepreneur. Cleone lives in Bridgewater, Massachusetts with her husband and two children where she founded a grassroots organization called Diversity and Inclusion for Community Empowerment, which is DICE, D-I-C-E, to assist her predominantly white community to embrace uh, diversity. So I want to welcome Cleone up. Uh, Cleone. Welcome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Kit. Happy to be here. Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to speak with you today So, and your audience. Yeah, thank you. So, Cleone, I actually want to give you the floor for like one or two minutes, and you can say anything that you want. How does that sound? Oh, geez. Anything? <laughs> Sounds great. Um, you know, it's been quite a journey, as you all know from what Kit just said. I am from Jamaica. And that country is a predominantly black country. And then I end up in Queens, which is very diverse. And so my experience 
has fluctuated from a very homogeneous black community to diverse community. And now I'm in a predominantly white community. And from that life experience that I've had, trying to raise my children in a community that I am not accustomed to um, as a child has been um, rewarding and challenging. And so with what's happening in the country and the world today, it's given me an opportunity to speak more about my experience and to, to share with others just a, a new way of interacting with with people of different backgrounds, with people with different political views and ideas. And so I'm, I'm just really looking forward to starting the conversation. Um, since the protest has begun, my texts and text messaging and um, social media have been filled with people wanting to learn more and talk about this. So this is my my first public um, conversation. So I'm really looking forward to spending this time with you all and um, lending any support, um, being a voice, being an ear around um, anti-racism today. So thank you for the opportunity, Kit. Yeah, Cleone, thank you. And I, I, since we're friends on Facebook, I was I was reading a post that I wanted to share, uh, one of your posts, and, and this was on June 9th. And I think this, uh, and I'm, I'm pressing congratulations and like on this now. But you also said diversity matters in your local government. You said yes, uh, well, June 9th, you were sworn in as one of seven members of the Charter Review Community, where yeah. you will serve as only one woman, what, on, as the only woman and just one of two people of color. So I just want to yeah. say congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, Thank for you. That. Yeah. So, actually, can you tell us more about uh, DICE and some of the initiatives? You yeah. Guys have having? So, DICE started after my son had a racial incident. He was referenced in school with the N word. And when he came home, the incident happened at noon at lunchtime, and he didn't come home until 3 15. He was nine at the time. Actually, he was eight at the time. And when he came home, he came right to me. He told me what had happened. And once he said it, you know, he just kind of went back out to playing. But before he did that, I said, honey, what do you want me to do with this information? Like, do you want me to call the teacher, the principal, or do you want me to just kind of teach you how to deal with this moving forward? Because we are in a predominantly white neighborhood. And he said, I want you to call. I want you to take care of this. And he ran out and play. And I called the principal and, and, and shared the story about what had happened. She was very sympathetic, um, eager to hear. She knew I was concerned. But at the end of that conversation, she said, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I would love to speak with you. However, I don't know what you expect me to do about this. Kids call each other's names all the time. Specifically, she used the term stupid, right? They call each other stupid all the time. And at that point, I realized that she didn't fully understand the magnitude and the difference between name calling and a racist term. And so when we went to the school and, and tried to find out what kind of resources they have, how can they help this population is growing to, to, to embrace racism, I know that it never happened before. And at that point, I realized that my personal story was not going to be enough. And so I, I started DICE to find out who else in my community are having these issues and just creating this space for those to come together because these kinds of things, especially for a family of color, is um, you don't necessarily, it's vulnerable to highlight it and put it out in a public space. So I started DICE and within 24 hours, I had 124 members mm -hmm. and of those 124 members, there were only like two people of color. So it didn't bring out the stories that I thought. I thought I would have a lot of people of color that who could say me too, me too. But what it did reveal was that, you know, the white people in my community wanted this and they were interested and they wanted to support it. And so since then we are now 324 members and that additional, you know, 100 and 200 just is, has been over the past two weeks. Wow, that's that's so great. Yeah. So I want to ask you this question. How, if, if, a, if a family wants to get this conversation started, What's one of the best ways to do that? What are some of your tips? For me, it, we wanted to be 
a, a family of safety, you know? So the tip for us was that we came in disarmed, right? We came in to teach and to learn. We didn't come in with anger or anything to kind of um, embarrass the school or anything. We wanted to come in and say, you know, this is not something that's specifically for the school. This is not something, um, isolated in this community this is something that is nationwide and i wanted us to stand together to look at the problem as uh, as partners right without the name calling without the finger pointing because we're all subjected to it right it is systematic racism that's just what it is and so starting i think that helped people to hear and listen because they weren't threatened by the conversation it wasn't in our hearts to do that we live here this is our home this is our community and i didn't want to kind of point fingers and say this is a problem that you need to fix on the other level i didn't want them to see this as a problem just for the people of color and whoa we i feel sorry for you let's fix this it was important for me to relate to everybody that we're all affected. Not only are the, the families and children of color impacted by these negative experiences, but the children who feel compelled to do this and inflict this harm are also harmed, right? Because clearly they're uncomfortable, clearly there is some fear. And so if I, it, my, my goal was if I can let everyone understand that we're all negatively impacted and this is a problem that we don't have to accept, then we can all look at it as partners to fix it and remove those defensiveness from it. So I think coming into the conversation with um, compassion, with love, and with an understanding that we it's not something that you've done it's not a failure in your character and taking out that personal um attack out of it allows you to have that conversation and i i try to keep that front and center it's not always easy i do surround myself with advisors and mentors to keep me on the straight and narrow because it does bring up a lot of negative feelings and it's not always easy to have someone who disagrees with you on the other side and still kind of see their their humanity in it. So I'm really about connecting to people as people um, and, and moving them in that way. At the same time, I am not here to change hearts. I'm not here to convince anybody. And so if someone is very grounded in their racism or grounded in their beliefs, I don't have the energy, I don't have the resources to keep um, trying to convince them, I strictly move on and I try to find allies, I try to find people who are are curious, they could be curious, but not knowing what more to do, or they just have this inclination that there is more out there. So those are the people I look for. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking to partner or um, work with those who are really set in, in their ways and they're holding on to these beliefs that are not serving themselves or serving anyone, myself, or in, in that kind of sense. Uh, Cleonia, uh, thank you for sharing. I love what you're saying. It's, uh, you're connecting people as people. Uh, so for mm -hmm. the people that's listening right now, I hope that you all get to connect with Cleone on LinkedIn or in person in the future. Uh, Cleone, I'm gonna invite you up later again because I want to invite Camille up. So I hope everyone say thank you, Cleone, uh, for now. So Cleone, I'm gonna put you back. So next, please uh, give a warm round of virtual applause for Camille Avant, who is the Director of Diversity Programs at Color Magazine. Uh, New England chapter president at the National Association for Multi-Ethnicity and Communications. And so Camila Avant leads Color, a diversity and inclusion event-based and online publication in Boston. Color's premier events empower professionals of color and diverse communities, address uh, DNI issues, share enrichment tools, foster lasting network connections, and recognizes diversity and inclusion achievements. The online publication celebrates corporate America's diverse workforce and empowers communities. Camila is also chapter president for the National Association for the Multi-Ethnicity and Communications, 
a nonprofit media trade association that educates and advocates for DNI communications, media, and entertainment. Camila is a member of the Southern New England Association of Black Journalists, a community advisory board member for Reflection and Action, a program at medical, um, Harvard Medical School Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Community Partnership, and a board member of the Children's Friend. So, Camila, welcome. Welcome. Good morning. How Good morning. Good morning, come here. So like I did with Cleone, I want to give you your two, one to three minutes of your time. So here's your floor. Well, thank you for you know, the invitation and the ability to speak with everyone, um, great panelists. And um, you know, I think this is an important topic. It's been a, uh, a long two weeks, two plus weeks, um, with everything that we've witnessed in this country. Um, again, this is nothing new for people of color, but I think it's a, a band-aid has been pulled away from a wound that um, has been similar to what you can just say is, is a cancer that's been pervasive in this country for a long time. And I think it's opened a lot of people's eyes to the fact that there's a lot of changes that still need to be made. Um, I want to just cheerlead this young generation that is really, you know, mobilized um, and really embraced uh, that we all should be uh, uh, focused on this topic, uh, focused on equality, focused on um, you know social justice, economic empowerment for our diverse communities. With COVID, uh, we've seen uh, an impact, social, mental health, um, employment, our communities of color has been really impacted from a lot of things. And so with this, um, drive to deal with the systematic problems of racism, which is so pervasive. I really am happy to see so many organizations and so many companies and so many people just asking, what can I do? Or really reflecting and seeing like, okay, this is something that I need to face personally, not only you know, in the workforce, but personally, because that's where I believe the changes really begin. Each person has to um, own this and 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 address it um, in their lives from all levels. Camila, thank you, thank you for sharing. There's one thing that you said. Uh, it was people want to get more involved. What can they do? We even have, as I'm reading the comments now, right? For example, uh, on Kelly on LinkedIn, the same. I want to get more involved, but I'm not sure how. Mm. So if people are in organizations, uh, outside of organizations, or maybe leaders are not listening to this, um, what can one do to get more involved? Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it also starts with just having difficult conversations. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, they don't know how to start. Um, so there are books, there are tools out there that um, people can use as a resource. Um, and a lot of it is personal reflection. So, so I always say, you know, for us people of color, you know, who have friends who are um, Caucasian, um, challenge them, ask them questions, have them, you know, um, really reflect and see how they have biases, right? Another thing to answer that question, what can I do? There are so many diverse organizations, Cleone just spoke about hers, get active. Um, if there's something in your community, a, a parent group um, for diverse students, it, most of the time those groups are not exclusive to those diverse parents. Learn about the other um, diverse students that your kids go to school with. Um, participate in, in all these groups that are like the, your local NAACP chapter, your local Urban League chapter, your, your local Latinx programs, and get active and mobilize in your community because I think action um, is also a way to educate yourself. Um, and a lot of these organizations have great missions. Uh, Cleone spoke about DICE. Um, so I think that's one way to get involved. One, start with the conversations and two, get active. Yeah, and definitely just get active. I love what you're saying, have difficult conversations. So I'm interested, what is Color Magazine? What are some things um, you all are working on right now? Uh, well, coming up at uh, the end of the month, June 30th, we have our first uh, virtual virtual professionals color career summit, and we have some great sponsors on board 
who are actively hiring right now. We have CCC, we have Merck, um, we also have Homesite Insurance. Um, and we have great community partners with uh, the National Society of Black Engineers, Alpha, um, Boston chapter. So COVID, again, has impacted so many people. And so there's record in unemployment right now. One of the ways to empower our communities is jobs. Um, so it's virtual. Um, I'm hoping that you will share some of our, our links at the end, register. It's free for um, attendees to sign up. Again, these companies are hiring right now. Uh, so um, empowerment starts um, basically at the, in your pocketbook, right? And, and I think with record unemployment in our urban communities, any way that color can help support them um, is a is major part of our platform. So we're doing a Professionals of Color Career Summit. We're doing a lot of um, conversations around mental health um, during this crazy time of change, these turbulent times. We had a great webinar focusing on how COVID has impacted um, health of African-American communities. We're looking to continue those conversations around mental health um, for communities of color, and also talk about how businesses of color have been impacted by COVID. Um, additionally, we're talking to a lot of diverse leaders who are really focused on the topic of you know, diversity and inclusion initiatives and partnerships um, during this time, because you know, diversity, inclusion, and equality has always been important, but I think now as the whole world can see, this is an issue that many organizations have to really um, highlight and focus and use as a platform to educate and uh, um, that's something that Color is working on in addition to a lot of the other organizations I'm involved in, is really how can we educate people? How can we um, um, use these organizations to really address these issues in a way that's effective, that can help uh, move the needle and um, facilitate change? Um, a lot of these organizations are, are involved with great companies. And um, that is a community. And once we have this wonderful community of people who are focused on inclusion, focused on equity, and focused on diversity, I think um, it's a way that we can see change in this country where we're all working together um, to, to make a change. Yeah, exactly. I hope, uh, just from the comments alone, I think everyone is loving what you're saying. And, and so Camila, I'm going to invite you back up a little bit later. So everyone, I hope you are saying thank you to Camila for now. We'll see Camila a little bit soon again. So next, I do want to invite Catherine Storing up. Uh, Catherine is an uh, Amazon bestseller of 21 books, a keynote and TEDx speaker, a two-time TEDx speaker. Uh, some of her TEDx talks were on finding community and conflict uh, another title is Meaningful Beauty is an Inside Job. Catherine, those are, those are great titles. Uh, she's a content monetization strategist, and she's also a founder of Writing Made Simple. So Catherine Storing has been coaching others for more than 20 years, even when she did not even know it herself. She never thought her love for words, books, and writing would allow her to pull her expertise and help others bring out their authentic voice and content to the world. Today, she works with executives, faith-based leaders and professional laymen and women who are willing to and ready to serve others with their words and talents in a global capacity. They know they need the confidence, guidance, and tools to successfully embrace their calling and help others with their content, book, courses, products, and programs. And that's where Catherine comes in. Uh, Catherine has been a longtime good friend, so I'm super excited to introduce her and bring her on stage. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you the virtual stage yeah. for a few minutes. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the, war the warm welcome. I'm really glad to be here. These ladies are amazing. Um, and I'm just glad that we you have created this platform for us to be able to uh, express how we're feeling and what's happening. So as an entrepreneur, I've definitely been affected, but more than that, as a human being as a woman of color, as a um, Hispanic, um, as a human being, really, I have been very affected by what's been happening. And as painful as it has been, it has been definitely 
a time for adjustment. I know that many people, because I'm, I'm talking to my students, to my clients, to a lot of people, and they have been feeling like, how do I move forward? How do I embrace the day? And um, I, have the, I have faced those, those days myself when you see another video pops up or somebody else does something and you're like, okay, there we go again. And it's been it's been difficult. It's been difficult to see it. Uh, but like some of the other amazing ladies have said, it has been happening. It has been a problem. And now uh, there is some light that is coming through. There, there are people actually recording and talking about what they experience on a regular basis. Um, little things that I never really thought about that kind of became normal for me. And I, and I would love to hear uh, people in the comments um, if they have experienced this uh, when something happens and is random right like if you go to the airport with a whole bunch of people which i have done many many times and every single time i was randomly selected for a pat down and the pat down pretty much every single time was a um more than invasive pat down but it was random and everybody else in the group who was not brown or black, did not get the pat down, right? So those little things that unfortunately, because it happened so many times that we did not think it was a big deal, it is an issue. And um, I'm glad that we're talking about it. I'm glad that we have the space and things are changing. And I think we do have to say something. So I have been addressing um, on social media with my students and everyone because um, we cannot stay quiet. Um, and I know it's hard for people. I'm having very difficult conversations and it has been amazing to be able to talk to my white friends and i have quite a few white friends uh they are allies but many of them were not aware let's just i'm just gonna say it. they were not aware that this was a problem for a lot of brown people a lot of people of color and um i talked to a friend we've been friends for five years and we never talked about race not a single time and um in the last few weeks we have cried together we have talked a lot about race she didn't even know how to address me like how i identify myself and it was great. It was great to have that conversation and be able to educate in a way and ask the questions. And I know I seen a lot of people get it wrong, and but they're saying something. So I just want to acknowledge every ally that has come up and has said something. And even if they have said it wrong, I, I hear your heart. I appreciate what you're doing. And I'm so thankful that um, you said something like, apologize say you're learning it's okay we i get things wrong all the time but staying quiet right now is just not an option so thank you so much kid for opening the forum for us so so Catherine, you were talking about you know difficult conversations and you know camille is bringing that up too so in the and i think you've mentioned some of this so would you be willing to share some examples of difficult conversations that you were having over these past few weeks yeah, absolutely. Um, so you're asking difficult conversations. I changed my Facebook profile, my personal Facebook profile, not my business one, even though I have addressed this in my business profiles, but I changed my own personal uh, Facebook page and I just put a new picture and I have a frame that says uh, Black Lives Matter, okay? I'm thinking that's a good thing to say, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not thinking much about it. Listen, and then I got people trying to educate me in my own profile to, to defend that all lives matter. I never said that all lives don't matter. All I even did was change my picture and my frame. And I had to talk to people and I had to breathe for a moment. And I had to say, um, Yes, I believe that all lives matter, but right now um, we are concentrating on the lives that are suffering the most. Um, thank you. So, and then this is what I said I gave them the benefit of the doubt for the ones that I could tell did not know any better. And I said, Thank you so much for your willingness to learn and to listen. And, um, you know, I wish you the best or something. So, I'm having those conversations where you kind of have to educate people. I'm not saying anything negative about anybody else. I'm just saying, right now we're concentrating on this very pro big big problem that we're having in the world and um yeah and, and it's just saying th little quote unquote little things like that that people need to be educated on and is these tiny things that like even like changing your facebook profile can just spark a whole conversation yeah, yeah. absolutely 
So Kat, I just want to say thank you for sharing. I'm going to invite you back a little bit. I'm going to invite everyone back up in a, in, in a, in a second or two, but I just wanted to read some comments that's, that's coming in. And so everyone say, thank you, Kat. <laughs> And put some emojis into the into the comments as well. Uh, so I just want to share some uh, comments that people are, are saying. Uh, Evelyn Everton gave this good quote when we first started: "Race, gender, religion, sexuality. We are all people, and that's it." Right from Connor Fanta. So I just want to say hi to everyone that's popping on. Uh, Janeri, good morning. Jason. Good morning, uh, Katie, thank you. Deb, thank you for going on. Uh, we have some people saying, yeah, we wanna get more involved. How can we get more involved? Uh, Teresa, thank you. Uh, Katie Aldrich also said, if you're interested in police or prison, about, uh, uh, I'm going tongue twister here, abolition in the greater Boston area, please feel free to message me and I can connect you with groups actively working on this, right? So connect with Katie, uh, connect with the people that's on the chat right now. But let's get started. I'm going to invite everyone back up. Okay. Welcome, ladies. Hello. I, I usually ask all the questions, but I'm going to say as well, if you all have, if any, if any of you have questions for each other, please feel free to ask as well. Um, I love it when when we might be arguing at the same time. So feel free to argue. I hear I hear some feedback loops going. Um, so we'll work on that. So I have, the first question is basically, what does anti-racism mean to you? So I, for me, it means it's an active way of seeing and being in the world that challenges the values, the structures, and the behaviors that are maintained on a systemic le level. I, I, I see it as a part of me. It is really how I interact in all the roles, whether it be as a mother, was, whether it be as a friend, whether it be as an activist that I've, I've now become, but it's, 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 paying attention to what I need to know, what I need to learn, and activate, actively working to identify where these things are popping up in my life and calling it out, right? Using my courage, using my voice to call these things out in a compassionate way, and then finding where I can intercept, where I can move things forward. So that's how I see the anti-racism work. It's this diff different layers of it, whether it be just educating myself or acting um, within my community or even mobilizing a community to challenge these structures, these systems that's been in place and that we've passively consumed as if it is the truth. Thank you. I, agree. I agree with Cleone. Um, it definitely is an active process. I mean, Angela Davis has made um, a, a number of works and writings on this same topic, but you know, it's a conscious decision to make frequent, consistent, equitable choices daily. So it's something that has to be um, in your nature. Um, you have to change policies. You have to change your practice and your attitudes. Uh, so the ultimate goal is so power is redistributed and shared equitable, equitably. Um, you know, as a mother, I see that um, all the time, uh, similar to Cleonia, I have two young African-American sons, one's 19, one's 21. And um, it's, it's, it's something that we have addressed as Cleone reflected in her opening um, in their education. And now, you know, as, as, we look and they are moving into the to the job world, you know, there's another layer of that anti-racism that has to be focused on. Um, and then again, in just greater society. So it's it's a multi-level um, um, problem that has to be used to really use anti-racist um, strategies to address these these tough issues we're facing. And again, uh, ladies, if you have any questions for each other, feel free just to, to ask. So 
Another question that I have, of course, if you don't have any questions, I have a whole list of questions, <laughs> as you know. Uh, we, we, we mentioned difficult conversations earlier, just like Catherine was doing, what other difficult conversations might you be experiencing or have heard, or just showing people how to um, get into difficult conversations. I think that's one thing that is a, a big on the topic. Either how can you start a difficult conversation, maybe share some experiences of difficult conversations you had to deal with. Yeah, I would say um, something that I'm listening and hearing a lot from people um, that are not of color, brown, black, yellow, whatever color you want to think of, um, it's that it's not a big problem. Like, um, yeah, but this other person also got killed. Or, um, you know, can we talk about something else? And it's hard in the moment to not get in your feelings. And it's hard to just like not want to get to people and get at people and say like, what did you just say? Um, and it takes, it requires a little patience, but I'm hearing from quite a few people, can we talk about something else or it's not a big deal and why can't just people forget about it? And it's taking that moment um, to educate and say, this is, people are angry, people are fed up. This is, this is a human issue. And if you see, and it's just kind of naming, can you, can you just think that the entire world is talking about this? So there are people that are not affected at all physically are protesting all over the world because of this issue and they're watching. So um, yeah, it is an issue and we have to talk about it for a little bit longer and a whole lot longer so that it's changed. So in those moments of people saying it's not a big deal or why you keep, keep talking about it, can we talk about something else? Or the content I'm seeing on social media and I would love to hear from the other ladies. If you're seeing on social media, uh, people saying, can we just go back to what we were doing before? Cause I'm seeing uh, a lot of that. Yeah. So I actually protect myself from those kinds of conversations. As you all have mentioned, it is emotionally taxing. It absolutely is. And there's a lot of fear that comes with this work. There's a lot of vulnerability. And for me to preserve myself and for me to move forward, I have to surround myself with those who are interested in learning, those are interested in doing something. So I don't, I don't subject myself to the naysayers. There is enough of us that are into this work who have an awareness of, of what's happening. Granted, it's different levels of awareness. And I surround myself, I wrap myself in support with these folks. And I let them know that you can ask your questions, you can fumble and fall, you can say the wrong words in my presence, and I will be compassionate, I will answer the questions, but I'm also on my own journey. And so my convert I do protect myself from those difficult conversations. Um, I listen first, sometimes we just jump in and we're ready to talk, but how can you really provide information or meet someone unless you know where they are? So it's really important to me that I listen because there's a there's so many angles that we can take. There's so many ways to approach it. But if you know where someone is, you know where their heart is, then you know which which kind of resource to provide. It can be a more customized approach, but you also have to protect yourself. You can't just open up your whole gut, make yourself vulnerable and have it be this, this um, spectator sport. I, I, I share everything, you listen and you go back. I start my conversations with, I need a commitment from you. If we're going to have this conversation, if I am going to take off my professional mask that I have been wearing in my community, in my work, I need it to be an exchange for something. And at a minimum, I ask that you read this book. Mm. No, I, I definitely agree with both um, Catherine and Cleone. It, it's, it's, it's emotionally hard. And for us who are in um, diversity and inclusion, um, it's, it's at a greater level now. Uh, I would say over the past two plus weeks, I've been talking about this from the time I get up, from the time I go to bed. And it's draining. It's really hard work. Um, a lot of my difficult conversations are personal. I Like again, I am raising two young black African-American men. And my youngest son is more, you know, rides with things. He's very laid back. My oldest is very passionate. And this has really touched him and we have hard conversations. He's realizing now what it's like to be a black man in this country. Um, and 
sometimes, you know, as a mother, you know, you, 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 we all operate, we, you know, this is a term everybody's familiar with, you code switch, right? You're in your work, you, you're in your lane at work. When you're home, you're in a lane, you're in lane at home. Um, but as a mother, seeing all these things and experiencing all these things and hearing the, the pain of my oldest son, it's, it is hard, you know, and then having phone calls from my white colleagues or just people who are in my network saying, um, how do I start these conversations? Um, and Catherine, you work with students and one, someone outreached to me and said, you know, um, it's a predominantly white school here locally. And he's like, how do I start having these conversations with my students? Mm -hmm. um, and you have to challenge them again, give them resources, tell them you need to be engaged in your community. We're in a relatively multicultural area. You sit in your exclusive area on the side of town. How engaged are you in the Boys and Girls Club, which is right two blocks over? How are you engaged in, in community activities? Um, bring speakers on. How is your faculty ratio? What, um, what other things are you teaching besides American literature or American history? Um, so there's so much to be said and so much to be done. Um, but I think, you know, these tough conversations are draining, but I think it's it cr it's a crack in the door. And then you start, once you have the conversation, is when you start um, pressing for people to do more. Again, I'm all about um, action. You can talk for a while. That's great for a little while. But what are you ready to do? You know, um, and this is not only in schools, it's in companies. You know, how committed are you to DNI? Are you putting your money where, where your mouth is? Are you putting in policies that are going to make changes in hiring and promoting and retention? Are you putting in policies to bring on diverse faculty in your schools? Um, and so your, your students of color see teachers that look like them. Um, that's a big issue in public schools. You have a lot of teachers that come in from surrounding communities into these diverse classrooms because let's be honest, um, in the inner cities, the salaries pay more. So you have student teachers coming in from, you know, the suburbs, they come in, they teach, they leave. Um, I don't think I can ever recall in elementary to high school that my sons had an African American teacher. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it, it's it's conversations, but then you have to start allyship. You have to start building bridges and making people or pushing them, okay, you have the education, you know what the issue is, what are you gonna do? What plans are you gonna put in place? Because we can talk about this topic, we've been talking about this, to this topic from, for years, hundreds of years, right? But it's time for mobilization, it's time for action. Um, how are we gonna get these young people who are passionate putting their lives in the line during COVID to protest, how are we gonna get them to the ballot box? This is an election year. What What is the policies around that? What are the programs, What are the where are the advocacy in getting these young people to move out of the streets? Because you can't only march for so long. How long are we gonna march through July? We're gonna march through August? We have a big election coming up. Policy changes are important. It's, it's, it's a multifaceted, um issue we have here so yes conversations difficult conversations yes sometimes they're tough and cleone i hear you <laughs> you know they're draining um but then when you have i love how you said give them a book and then maybe after they read the book say hey you know circle back what did you think of that book and then mm -hmm. is there something changed in their mindset or is it just like oh i read the book and yeah i get it but okay so what is, what's your next step? What, what, do you, what is your takeaway from that? What are you going to do? I think we have to challenge a little bit more. Yeah. And, and what you're saying, Camilla, it, it goes back to what, what I'm doing in my community with my supporters, right? So much can happen in a community. If you can find a community, it may start with just three of you. But when you all feel you don't have the courage, right, individual courage, you get a couple of people and you combine your courage together, you really can do something. So that's what's really have helped me find my voice in this space. Because in my, my professional life, I've tried to
much of a voice, kind of blend in. Like, you know, I had some stuff to do. I'm coming from a country that, you know, almost like a third world country. I love Jamaica and I hate to put it in that category. So as you're trying to make your way in this world and create a certain level of success to, um, you know, make sure that your family's investment in you all pays off. There's a certain level of um, work that you have to do internally, and you may not always have the energy to extend out, right? But you can get that energy by creating this community. And so here in Bridgewater, there are three major organizations that we work collaboratively together. DICE is really about that individual conversation where people can just have these open conversation. We call those the listening session. And then we have another group that's going to be doing the learning session. They're going to put together a series of education materials so people can digest. And then we have a third group. They don't call themselves this, but I'm going to call it. They're like the action group, right? So you have all these three different groups not taking on the entire movement, but I'll do the listening, I'll do the teaching, and then I'll do the action. The community piece is very important. You cannot do this work in isolation. A lot of it is scary. A lot of it requires vulnerability, but a majority of it um, has to do with courage. And if you feel that there's other people that share your same views, or there are other people that need you to step up on behalf of them, then that's where you, the momentum, but you need the listening, you need the learning, and you need the action. Leone, everything that you said, I, I love that. Listening, learning, and taking action. I think those are super, super important. I want to read something uh, from the comments. Evelyn was saying, it's important. We need to talk about it. Respect, dignity is a right that should never be violated, no matter your race, economical status. It won't change unless we keep the conversation and, and actions going. So I want to ask, you know, as, as we were talking about resources, keeping the conversation going, I want to ask you all, well, if people want to learn more, what kind of, what type of resources? Do you have any specific examples? Or if they want to start specific conversations, what are some concrete steps that they can actually do? So either maybe specific things that they can just go up and, and Google and, and buy or learn or books or anything like that, or maybe specific steps that they can just take action on today or tomorrow. Well, there's a number of books out there and, and films. I mean, there's so much content on this topic. Um, you know, there's, uh, I can name, you know, there's, as you started, Kit, you referenced a James Baldwin quote, but he has a book that's been written years ago and still seems like it was, it applies today. I'm not your Negro is a good start. There's a book um, by Robin D'Angelo, White Fragility. Um, there is Ibram X. Kendi, uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist, similar to you know how we kicked off this conversation on what does that mean. But there's also a lot of films. I mean, a lot of it is, again, knowing your history. Um, a, just a movie that just recently came out, Just Mercy by Brian Stephenson. Um, um, Marshall talks about the Thurgood Marshall and his work um, by Reginald Hudlin. Um, and we all know Ava DuVernay is doing powerful work around um, the 13th Amendment and uh, a recent work she did on the Central Park Five. Um, Sydney Potier had a book, uh, a, a film separate um, but equal. And there's so much content out there that you can direct people. People can search um, about this. There's academics in your area, I'm sure, in your local universities. I live in Rhode Island. Um, Brown University has a number. There's um, centers of race and justice, and they put on programs that are free and people can just go and sit in and listen to a lot of their faculty who, who publish and write on this topic. Um, and, in, and if you're in the greater Boston area, there's plenty of universities there with um, Harvard University's Hutchinson they Center. They put on and put out a number of content and have um, you know world-renowned scholars. So the content is out there. Um, if someone really wants to learn, all you really have to do is search or, you know, watch a movie to 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 enlighten yourself. Um, so, I mean, Catherine, you're a teacher. I'm sure you do kind of direct people to um, um, 
and your, some of your friends or your students or your colleagues, um, but there is a lot of content out there. And um, just turning on the news, there's people who are speaking on this issue who have been writing on this issue, so. And, and I wanted to do a plug what, what Camila said. As a productivity and time management expert, you the problem sometimes is there is so much information, right? And when you get this almost paralysis because where do you start? So here is a tip, create a learning plan, right? Get very clear on what kind of advocacy you wanna be, what kind of person, how do you wanna show up in this space? Once you get clear on that, then figure out the steps that you can take to get there and come up with a learning plan. In 30 days, I wanna finish this book. In 30 days, I wanna get a better understanding of what anti-racism is. It could be in 30 days, I need to get a un uh, better understanding of all the definitions that people have been throwing around there, out there. So, you know, there are tons of resources. There's going to be tons more, but if you feel that you are just overwhelmed and you don't know where to start, start with yourself. What change do you wanna see in yourself? How more, What in what area do you want to feel more competent? the best place is where what what's the rub what's the thing that just really makes you nervous the most and lean into that and then figure out what tools what resources can get me there think about are you a, how do you learn are you a visual learner do you learn well with books do you need it to be audio support yourself in this work create a plan 30 day plan and then get a community. If it's a book and you know that you don't finish books, then start a reading club with one or two friends. If if you know you don't process information through reading, then get an audio book. Don't beat your, your head against the wall trying to conform to another way of learning, especially when it's around this hard stuff. Honor your learning style, come up with a plan, execute it, and then even more importantly, create an accountability partner so that you, you, you're you going to be held to this kind of work. I love, love that. Those are great resources. Um, so there's no, there's no lack of, like you guys said, there's no lack of resources. People in the chat are being awesome and posting a lot. Uh, one thing that I would say, I love a question that Jason asked as an ally, where is the line between speaking up for and speaking over? And I think that's a great question. So resource is your good and close, you know, brown friend, your black friend, ask them questions. I have had people go into my DMs, call me and say, hey, I'm a, I want to say this. And I, lo I love the, the, the love behind it. I want to post this. Is this OK? And I love where they're coming from. And they're like, is, am I saying this right? Um, is, is it OK if I say this? So you also a resource. If you're reading the book and you want to say something now, I was telling my students and I teach entrepreneurs how to be how do we proactive and say something instead of like continue to post about their business without not addressing the elephant in the room? I'm like, you need to say something. Where do you stand as a business? I mean, I did that and I think I couldn't move forward without saying that. So I think you do have to say something, but if you don't know what to say, ask your friends that are going through it. And then if you want to still go live and do a video, I'm more, I'm half, I'm sure that many of them will be more than happy to go live with you so you can ask those questions in person and they can kind of like monitor the conversation and then be vulnerable so the resources out there i know that you ladies are amazing resources i definitely cannot wait to connect with you off offline um but there's information out there and ask your friends ask them how they're feeling check on them and say hey i want to read this book um what do you think have you read it uh, where can i go so this if you're willing, there's a lot of stuff that we can do to educate ourselves and and not just be a nice ally that doesn't do bad stuff, but actually can push the movement forward and, and, and push for change. Ladies, thank you so much. As we're coming to a close here, uh, this is not the close. This is just the start of the conversation. But ladies, uh, are there any last words? And also, if people want to learn more about you, where should they go? Who wants to go first? <laughs> well, my name is pretty unique. You look me up. <laughs> I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, Google search my 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 name. I I'm so willing to connect to those who want to 
to learn more. Um, just talking about that uh, learning plan, maybe I, I'll create something and put it out there. But um, I am a safe space for you to, to, to kind of ask questions and fumble, fall, trip, <laughs> and uh, would love to connect with you um, in any of my social media to continue this conversation. I'm really excited about what my community is putting together around those listening session, learning sessions, and action ses sessions. And so if you're looking to re replicate that in your community, it's such a great place to start. And I, I'll gladly share what we've learn through our own process. Uh, like um, Cleone, my name's pretty uh, unique. You can find me um, on my com my company's um, website, Color, and we're doing a lot of things around um, diversity, inclusion, equity, um, empowerment. We have numbers of um, inspirational and uplifting events. We do a women of color um, empowerment and leadership conference. We do a men of color um, leadership conference. And we also do our career summit. So we have a lot of content that will also connect you to people who are also doing that work and build your network. Because I really do agree with Catherine. Um, you need to have your own personal board of directors. Again, this work is hard and you need to have your own support system. Um, people that you can go to when you need a shoulder to cry on or someone just to listen, to hear you out when you need to vent or someone who, who can give you a gateway or a connection to someone else. Because again, we this is a network and similar to as Cleone said, we all have to collaborate, build allyship and partners and work together to address these, these tough issues. So you can reach out to me through color. You can reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on social media as well. I have Facebook. Um, so definitely connect with me. And I'm thankful, thankful for those who have already um, outreached um, to me in LinkedIn and the, from the chat. So it's been a great experience. And thank you again, Kit, for the opportunity. That's awesome. Um, so um, I am all over social media. You can find me, um, Catherine Storing. Um, I know that I have been stuck myself before and this moment I have been stuck. So what I want to gift everyone, no opt-in, no purchase, no nothing. It's my gift to you. As part of my um, teacher easy book, I know that right now a lot of people are feeling stuck. So I have created a document on Google Docs. I'm going to put the link in the comments and you can download it. It's also going to be added as a... Um, audio file very soon because right now more than ever more than ever the world needs you i would love to connect with you but if you're feeling stuck and you don't know how to move forward and you have to connect with the amazing things that you're called to do in the world and i know that you have great gifts uh, i want you to download that pdf again no opt-in no purchase no nothing it's just uh, i want to help you get unstuck if you want to connect with me on linkedin um be more than happy to connect with you i spend a lot of time on facebook and on instagram pretty easy to found to be found. Um, I believe in what we're doing. I believe in you and in any way that I can support you in any way that I can become your cheerleader, uh, please go ahead and, and reach out because I know what it's like to feel unstuck. My mic was muted. But I want to say uh, thank you to Camila, Catherine, and Cleone just for coming on with us. And for everyone that's watching uh, live and watching the replay of this, uh, Julie, I'm just calling out some names. Julie Brown, thank you. Tina, thank you. Nancy, Deb, Maria, Dominique, Scott, and a lot more other people. Uh, today, again, it's just the start of this conversation. So I do hope that you take what you've heard today. Maybe you're inspired, maybe you're motivated. Take that that feeling that you have inside of you and keep on, uh, like what Cleone was saying, listen, learn, and take action. So again, if you have not had a chance to connect with our panelists yet, connect with them on LinkedIn. And my name again is Kit Pang. We're from Boston Speaks. You can also visit our website at bostonspeaks.com. But we want to say thank you, everyone, our panelists, our audience. Just thank you once again, and we hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>